Seagull watches. For a while now, I've dismissed them as being another subpar Me Too brand, but I couldn't have been more wrong. Getting this particular watch on a whim has resulted in me rethinking my stance and has sparked my curiosity to see more. I am glad I got this watch. I feel good about it. It makes me happy. And in this video, you might see why. I was curious about Seagull watches, and chances are, so are you. Come watch. Hey guys, welcome back to the Minute Watch channel. Unless you're a new person, then welcome to the Minute Watch channel. My name is Kurt, and this is the Seagull M163S. And uh, if you're wondering, Seagull is a Chinese company that started operations in 1955 at the uh, request, <laughs> or more like the order, of the Chinese government. And they've come a long way. Seagull is perhaps the best watch company out of China, and is the world's largest producer of mechanical movements. They legit produce more than one quarter of all movements manufactured in the entire world every year. Seagull used to be called Dong Feng, which means East Wind, but for political reasons, it was changed to Seagull in 1974. The reason they chose this name is because the Seagull is capable of flying great distances, and because of that, can carry their brand very far. Very clever, Seagull. Seagull is also an original and authentic watch company with their own aesthetic and mechanical designs as well as making a few homages. Seagull is a company that also suffers from people making fakes. I would only get a Seagull from an authorized seller or from an authorized Seagull storefront. Uh, and with that, I never really cared about C Seagull or getting one, uh, but I decided to be impartial and give it a chance while perusing some other watches in, uh, in my favorite online store. I saw this particular one and I was like, hmm, let's check this out. It's kind of funky, it's kind of interesting. And did you just look how shiny it is? This thing is like just ridiculously shiny. So I got this for $189.99 uh, US. And you can check it out on the link below if they still have any left. But this uses Seagull's in-house ST2505 automatic mechanical movement. Beats at 21,600 BPH, employs 21 joules, and has a more than 40 hour power reserve. There is a retrograde date function right there, which means that the date goes all the way to 31 and then swings back to the, the one position. There is a power reserve indicator on this side, and it works well, to let you know how your watch is doing. <laughs> and what else? Uh, the flying wheel complication on this watch is there. It's really cool. While it is really cool, it's uh, it exists to mimic the a bonafide flying tourbillon rotating cage. It's gimmicky, but I like it. This, parti this particular prefer. <laughs> This particular movement can be found in many examples as they export a lot of these movements to companies such as Parnas, all the way to Timex, and even some uh, Swiss Swiss companies. Uh, it, it appears to have some kind of uh, Inca block-like shock protection. So it's, overall, it seems to be a very well-built movement. I have timed this watch to plus five seconds per day over a, the course of a week. So it's pretty darn well accurate. The movement is hackable and windable. It's not a screw down crown, but it is hackable. You pull out the crown and the second hand stops moving. Put the crown back in and the second hand starts winding again. The winding is ticking and the, there's a very loud winder. You can hear it. The, wind, the winder is very loud, very taut and it's, it, feels, it feels nice. It feels old school and nice. Uh, let's see what else. The super shiny case is made out of 316L marine grade stainless steel as I believe is as well as the bracelet and the case has a water resistance of 50 meters the which is kind of okay you can get it wet a little bit I wouldn't get it super wet but you can get it wet a little bit I wouldn't go swimming with swatches because uh, I'll, I'll tell you why later but there is a non AR coated sapphire crystal crystal up top crystal up top and a mineral crystal in the back party in the front the slightly less party in the back. <laughs> the kitty party in the back. Um, so I am I am super impressed with the quality 
the quality, the overall quality and appearance of this watch. I really love the detail in the dial. I don't know if you can see it. There's a, there's a lot of really good detail going on in there. Uh, and it's, it's I, 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 what can I say? I like, I like the blue dial, uh, the blue the blue hands. The dial is nicely done. Um, that uh, fake tourbillon is kind of cool. I, I, I zone out on it. It's pretty cool. There is only one little thing about it that's weird, is that the uh, the there is non symmetry between the retrograde function as well as the the power reserve. You can clearly see that the retrograde subdial, half moon subdial, is bigger and not quite symmetry. So that's one thing that's kind of trips me out, and I kind of feel like that was an afterthought. I feel like uh. Some people at the design board were like, oh no, how are we going to do the retrograde date? It's going to not be good. And then someone else, like the big bosses, was like, just just make it bigger. And, <laughs> and then here we are. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. Or maybe they just, you know, NFG. Maybe they just were NFG and they, that's how they wanted to do it. So either way, I don't mind it. It is kind of a weird thing. But uh, I don't mind it because the overall package is exceptional. For, for what you're paying for, it's exceptional. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? The bracelet. The bracelet is super well made. Probably the most uh, fingerprints you'll ever see on a watch is going to be on this bracelet because the whole thing is polished. Uh, they had to match the case. The case, there's no... There's no brushing or satin finish on the case. The case is all polished all the way around. So naturally they had to make the bracelet polish. The deployant clasp is also polished on the inside and outside. Oh, the other bracelet is not polished on the inside. It is it is satin on the inside. Uh, the bracelet is signed with the seagull word on there. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the crown is also signed with the, with the seagull S right there. And the bracelet is solid linked and solidly linked and as the end links are proper solid end links and not just a proper solid solid end link the end link to first link is actually pinned in as you can see right there it's actually legit pinned in so putting it on is a little bit easier than uh than most bracelets so it's very well done very solid has a real good feel of quality to it the only thing is that yeah super fingerprint monster super super fingerprint monster so uh yeah and the, br the bracelet is kind of bulbous as you can see there i'll show you later i'm going to do a wrist shot later but it's kind of it kind of bulbous is out and even though this is a relatively small watch it does wear very big and i'll show you later so let's uh let's uh check out the measurements that's uh beep, 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 beep. measurements all right here we go so for the case i got 38 me 38 meters that's a huge case 38.8 <laughs> millimeters lug to lug i got 47.8 millimeters lug width i got 20 millimeters and thickness i got 12.6 millimeters all right so there's no loom i've tested it with a light <laughs> there is no loom somebody mentioned that there's loom on the 11 12 1 5 uh, four, five, seven, and eight markers behind them, but there does not seem to be on mine. Uh, perhaps they did that in the previous versions, and there looks like there is some spots to put loom, but mine doesn't have it. Maybe they forgot. I don't know. Maybe it was a holiday, and the loom guys were on holiday. But anyway, that's not a big deal. Didn't buy this watch for loom. Bought it for that flying wheel. Not gonna lie. Full disclosure. Bought it for that silly flying wheel. <laughs> I just think it's cool. It's it's just a zony little rad little thing, and yeah, sure, it's it's gimmicky, but you know, so is a lot of things that I buy. You know. Anyway, let's see. No loom. Uh, let's okay. Let's show it on my wrist here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. My wrist is currently uh, uh, six point six inches because I. Because uh, I've been working out, so I guess the, some muscles are being built in that wrist. Not the kind of workout you guys thinking about, you sick bastards. But, uh, you know, curls and uh, push-ups and uh, stuff like that. You sickles, I know what you guys are talking about. Anyway, there it is on my wrist. So as you can see, that it, it wears kind of big. That bracelet does protrude out. It wears kind of square on my small wrist. So this setup is not 
really good for the, a small wrist, guys. It, it will square up, and I hate that. I hate when watches square up on me. It makes me feel like I, I'm a 7th grader, and I got my first Casio G-Shock again. Remember those days when you got your first big-ass Casio G-Shock? We were, we were wearing this this meteor deflection unit. You you know, Yo, we deflect the meteor. Ping! Ah, we're done. You know, that's what, it, that's what I'm reminded of. And... I have a couple of big watches. I have a couple of 44s. My Seiko Turtle is, is a big watch, but it wears well. And this, with this bracelet, in my opinion, does not. So let's just take a little snapshot right here, shall we? All right, we're taking, that's done. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna take off this bracelet and we're gonna put a, uh, one of my cheapy straps on here, just to see, just so you guys can see uh, what happens with, when I do that. And, uh, Hopefully I can do this quickly for you guys and not waste any more of your precious time because I feel like I've been wasting a lot of people's time lately and uh, well, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> uh, irony. Irony is so ironic. All right, gonna take the, gonna take the, uh, oh, gonna take, see how you, you can take out the, the spring bars and not have to worry about the end links falling off. I love that. That's a that's a proper bracelet and then I'm just gonna put uh, that away really didn't need it so I'm gonna put it on this uh, strappy strap strappy McStrappers and if you guys follow my channel you guys have seen this strap so many times I need to order some new ones I've just been so busy and uh, and uh, yeah getting ready for an adventure and uh, it's gonna be quite interesting it's gonna make for us <laughs> Some stories for sure. We're gonna stay in a hostel. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Wow, just look at that. Now, to me, to me now, this is much better. This is the Hadley Roma MS834 that I rave about so much because it's got a good size for a small watt or wrist, guys. So, uh, to me, it looks much better, and I can finally put this bracelet away because I finally did this video, and I can finally just wear it on a bracelet. So, I mean, on a strap. So. Looks really good. I love this color combination. I might put it on a black one later, or a dark brown one, or a hyper purple, or a super pink. I don't know. Depends. But what do you guys think about that? Now, to me, it's a proper, proper watch. So let's put it on my wrist here. And, uh, of course, I put the strap on backwards like a bonehead. <sighs> I'll fix that later. But yeah, I put it on backwards. <laughs> uh, talking too much. So there you go. What do you guys think? Yes. Right? 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 Now it looks like a proper, proper watch. And it's just, it's, it's visually appealing to my face vision. And it, even though it's kind of a thick watch because of the ST2505 movement, it's, it's, now it doesn't feel as big because of that bracelet. And I really like that. So let's take another snapshot here. All right. Let's compare them side by side. So there you have it, guys. There's side-by-side -side comparison of with the bracelet and without the bracelet. And as you can see, well, that's I think it looks better anyway. So there you go. That is that is uh, my review here. Uh, overall thoughts, very impressed. 9 out of 10 would recommend, but only because... Uh, I, I didn't give it a 10, only because of the bulbous and overly shiny bracelet and because of that, uh, that weird... Uh, that, that weird uh, retrograde date that doesn't quite match the other side. But 9 out of 10 would recommend I'll probably get another one or maybe three or maybe a flock of seagulls, eh? And I ran, I ran so far away I just ran, I ran all night and day And I'm gonna get away uh, forgot the forgot uh, forgot a very important part, and that's the case back. And you can clearly see the movement in there. It's a beautiful, beautifully done movement. It's got uh, uh, it's very well dressed. It's a superbly dressed movement for the price, and uh, okay, it can rival many other higher end movements in, as far as how nice it is. It's, it's kind of it's kind of awesome. I don't like that the, the, the model number of this watch is stamped right there on the case back, but whatever. At least it's not in a shitty spot. But really nice, nicely done movement, wouldn't you say? Very nicely done. And uh, 
Root mad mad props, you guys, at the Seagull. I'm impressed. Uh, gonna get the, some more later. All right.